In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to use hotkeys in Pyro GUI, as well as give you some general tips for building macros. Hello humans, I'm Kyle and welcome to Code for Humans, the channel that teaches you how to code. In this lesson, we're going to be going over hotkeys, so to start, I'll say import Pyro GUI. So hotkeys are key combinations. This is stuff like control S to save files, control O to open them, stuff like that. As an example, let's just highlight all of the text in our console and then copy it so then later we can manually paste it. Let me show you what I mean. So I'll say pyrogui.hotkey. So hotkey can take two or three arguments depending on how many keys are in the hotkey combination you want. Currently, I just want to select all text and I know that's control A. So the way I say that is CTRL for control and then A. So now let's just run this code and we can see what happens. And as soon as our code runs, all of this text gets highlighted. If you click in your console yourself and you hit control A, you can see everything get highlighted. So now to copy it, all we need to do is basically repeat what we have. So I'll copy and paste that, except now I'm gonna say, instead of control A again, control C. So highlight all of my text and then copy it. Um, just in case, we should, uh, we should make a pause so pyrogui.pause is equal to 0 0.25. So in between each of these actions, there's going to be a quarter of a second delay, just so we don't run into any issues. So what I'll do is I'll run our code. And now it highlighted it and copied it. And to prove that I copied it, I'll come over here and I'll right click and paste. And now you can see all of that information over there has been copied to my clipboard so I can paste it just like that. So I'm gonna control Z this, but as a word of caution, not all hotkeys work. In my experience, I've had issues when trying to do alt tab, and I know there's plenty of other hotkey combinations that don't work, at least currently. In the future, they might update this. I'm not sure if Pyro GUI is still being updated, but if you're having issues with a certain hotkey combination, I would advise looking at the C types module. So I'll type that out for you, C types. It's pretty complicated. Pyro GUI is pretty user-friendly and C types really is not, but if you're desperate, look into that module. Now, some of you might be wondering, well, how do I know that CTRL is control? How do I know I'm not supposed to type out the whole word? And the way you do that is one, experience, but two, there's also a constant in Pyro GUI that tells us all of the valid keyboard keys that we can use. So the way we look at that is we say print Pyro GUI dot keyboard keys in all caps. So when I run this, you can see I get all of these keys printed out, like there's a ton of them. But this is every single keyboard key that Pyro GUI will allow you to use. So some notable ones are escape, delete, we can use the F keys, we can use what else is pretty cool here? Oh, win for the Windows key that is to the right of your left control key. So it's the same thing as clicking this. So that's kind of useful in some situations, but you can look through these yourself. Just remember that if you ever are wondering what a key is, look in pyrogui.keyboardkeys. The last thing I'm gonna show you is the fail safe. So again, it's a constant in pyrogui. So I'll say pyrogui.failsafe. Again, in all caps, and this can be true or false. I'll set it to true. And what this does is let's say your macro starts clicking on the wrong stuff. It's starting to mess up files that you don't want to mess up. So you just need to stop the program from running. So one of the things you can do is move your mouse to the top left corner and that'll kill your program if you set failsafe to true. So to demonstrate this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click a bunch of times and then I'm going to use the failsafe to stop that. So I'll say pyrogui.click and then I'm going to copy and paste this a few times. And I'll change my pause to two. So there'll be two seconds in between each click. But now when I run my code, if I move my cursor to the top left of my screen, you can see we get an error message and there was a fail safe exception. Because I moved my cursor to the top left of my screen and we have fail safe set to true, my code will stop in that situation so that if my macro gets away from me and starts messing up files I care about, I can instantly stop it and be worry free. But that's it for this tutorial. As always, a big thank you for liking, subscribing, and ringing that bell. Comment below with suggestions for future videos, and I will see you in the next one.